Hello, my name is Fieldon Allison, and I'm here with my wife, Janet. We've lived in Africa since 1972, and we've focused on marriage and family teaching and counseling since 1984. We both have master's degrees. Mine is in Bible, and my wife's is in marriage and family therapy. But what qualifies us the most to handle these issues is not our education so much as our experience in African cultures, along with our knowledge of the Word. We're looking at some of the questions that come up when we teach marriage seminars and workshops. Our question for today is a question that confuses many people in Africa. And we're seeing that many American couples are struggling with this question these days as well. The question is, is it wrong to use family planning? This question troubles many people as world population increases daily. The Chinese government solved their problem by making it mandatory for all couples to use contraception. They made it a law that each couple was allowed to have only one child. If they had more than one, they were heavily taxed. Mm -hmm. This is not only a huge social issue, but it is also a moral issue. We've heard about Chinese families who struggle to know what to do if they give birth to a girl or to a second child. Abortion rates, even infanticide, which is the killing of live babies at birth, increased greatly in China. And today they have a problem finding wives for their sons. I recently heard that trafficking of brides from other Asian countries has become an issue. I think we need to point out right from the start that we are in a total opposition to using abortion as a method of family planning. We consider that to be murder. A fetus is a child of God even from the moment of conception and should thus be valued. In the United States, there have been millions of babies murdered in the last three decades. That's true. In America, as in most countries of the West, including South Africa, abortion has been legalized. However, in spite of the fact that most of Africa has refused to legalize abortion, Thousands of babies, even there, are being aborted every year illegally. The Western countries claim that a woman should have the right to choose to carry or not to carry her baby or to abort her baby, that we are refusing her right to have control over her own body by not legalizing abortion. Yet they forget that the baby she is carrying is also a human being and has certain rights, mainly the right to be born and to live. Well said, Fielden. Many focus on the rights of women and forget about the rights of those babies. The right of choice that a woman has, the right of control over her own body, is the right to say yes or no to having sex. If a woman doesn't want to be a mother yet, then she has the choice to say no. And when she says no, men must learn to respect that. It is her right to refuse until she becomes a wife with certain obligations to fulfill her husband's sexual needs. There are many methods that a couple can use that can prevent pregnancy until they're ready to have a baby. That's what we want to discuss today. Are those methods a good way for people to control the population increase? I think, first of all, we need to establish by looking at Scripture whether it is a good thing or an evil thing to limit the number of children that a family has. The scriptures don't really speak to this issue directly, as it wasn't a problem for them even 2,000 years ago. So we have to use our own wisdom in light of what scriptures do teach to discern what is the best plan of action. We know that the Catholic Church in particular forbids their people to use an artificial means of contraception although they do allow them to use the rhythm method, which is a process of counting the days in the wife's menstrual cycle to avoid her fertile days. That's definitely been their religious conviction for many years. However, in these modern times, with the prevalence of AIDS in many countries, the Catholic Church has allowed their people to use condoms when one member of the couple is HIV positive. This, of course, also prevents pregnancy. 
Nevertheless, the Catholic hierarchy still forbids the use of any chemical method of controlling childbirth. Most churches and religions, however, do permit couples to use chemical and other strategies to prevent pregnancy. So what is your opinion on using those things? You're absolutely right to say we need to look at Scripture. One of the main arguments that I've heard churches use to deny the use of contraception is that in the beginning, when God made Adam and Eve, he told them to be fruitful and multiply and to fill the earth. Yes, God did tell Adam that in Genesis chapter 1, verse 28. But our question then becomes, was this a command for all people for all time, or was it simply for Adam during his time? When we look at the scriptures, we must be careful to discern which parts still apply today to us and which are simply history to inform us of God's work in the world. Exactly. When we look at Adam's day, we can see that God had just created this big world and then made two people, a man and a woman. The words he spoke to them were relevant for their time because the world was empty. There were only those two people in the whole wide world and he wanted them to fill it up. Uh, if, if we look closely at this verse, we see that it's not so much a command as it is a blessing. The verse begins with the words, And God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. If this was a command for all people, why would God allow some people to be unable to have children? Even many of God's chosen servants were distressed by not being able to produce offspring. For example, Abraham, Isaac, Zachariah, who became the father of John the Baptist, Hannah. I could go on and on. And when we look at Jesus Christ himself, if this was was a command for all people for all time, then he didn't keep the whole law after all. That's a good point. Actually, this command or blessing only appears twice in the Bible. The second time we see these words, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth, is in Genesis chapter 9, verse 1. What we see in this book of beginnings is that Adam did as God instructed. He filled the earth with people. However, those people turned to evil and became so corrupt and violent that God decided to destroy them all. That's when God sent the flood upon the earth and killed all human beings, along with all the animals in the world, except those who were in the ark with Noah and his family. After Noah and his family came out of the ark is when God said those words to him. Again, there were only a few people, eight to be exact, in an empty world that needed to be filled. So we can see that those words were spoken to specific people for a specific purpose purpose at a specific time. You can search the scriptures from front to back, and you won't find that command from God anywhere else except in those two references. Yes, children are a blessing from God. We have many scriptures that teach us that. For example, in Psalms 127 in verse 3, it says, children are a heritage of Jehovah God, and the fruit of the womb is his reward. But it is not a command from God that must be followed by all people. What you just mentioned is so important. Children are a blessing from God, and as such, we should rejoice to receive them. However, when they become a burden to parents who can't take care of so many, then perhaps they need to limit the number they have so that they can truly rejoice in the blessings that God has given them. Speaking of children being a burden sometimes, it's interesting that Jesus himself said concerning a particular time of hardship for the Jewish people. In Matthew chapter 24 and verse 19, Woe to them that are with child, and to them that give suck in those days. A woe is the opposite of a blessing. I think we can agree that the instruction to fill the earth was spoken to only two people, and that it does not apply to us today. When we look at the population increase in the world, we can see that the world has been filled. You know, today there are over 7 billion people in the world. 
and many countries are struggling just to feed all of their people. Not to mention meeting all the social concerns such as education, Mm -hmm. health care, crime, and economic needs. Mm -hmm. That's absolutely right. However, there is one scripture that is particularly relevant to our situation today. It's found in 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 8. Would you please read that verse, Fielden? If any does not provide for his own, especially for those in his own household, he has denied the faith and is worse than an unbeliever. Those are strong words. Yes, when I hear that verse, I am reminded of my friend. Alice and Frank, not their real names, had ten children. Every year you would find Alice pregnant, but they refused to use any kind of contraceptive. So they continued to have more and more children. The problem was that Frank did not have a good job and had no farm, so he he was not able to feed his family adequately, Mm -hmm. and he certainly couldn't afford to educate them. Well, that's the crucial point, isn't it? Can a man afford to support many children? There's nothing wrong in having a large family if the parents are able to care for them properly. However, if they aren't able to support many children, not only to feed and to clothe them properly, Mm -hmm. but also to educate them, then it would be wrong for them to have so many. Mm -hmm. Frank and Alice's children were very resentful. They could see other children who were well-fed and well-clothed, yet they themselves were often going to bed hungry. They never had tea in the morning, and when they finished primary school, which was free, there was no hope of going on to secondary school. There was no money for school fees. That's exactly how so many children end up on the streets. When you talk to them, you find that many of them have parents at home, but they are frustrated because they aren't taken care of properly. They end up on the streets begging, stealing, maybe sniffing glue and sleeping in the gutter. They prefer this life with their street family simply because they are accepted by the group whereas they were rejected or abused by their parents, and they find ways on the streets to forget their problems. It is a huge responsibility to become a parent. Paul said that if you don't care properly for your family, then you're worse than an unbeliever. Much thought and planning should go into having children. It is not a responsibility you can pass on to others when it gets hard. I knew a preacher once who was a fantastic evangelist. He was very effective in preaching the gospel and was invited to go all over the district to evangelize. However, the church in his home village was very weak. They saw that this preacher neglected his family at home. They sometimes didn't have enough food and often couldn't pay school fees. Neighbors often had to help them. Those words that Paul spoke were especially for preachers and leaders in the churches. A leader must begin showing his faith right at home. Getting back to our question of whether it is right or wrong to use family planning, it comes down to being a matter of a person's conscience. If a person believes in his heart that it is wrong to use a particular method of contraception, then it would be wrong for that person or for that couple. In Romans chapter 14 and verse 23, Speaking on the issue of eating meat that has been offered to idols, Paul tells us, But he that doubts is condemned if he eats, because he eats not of faith, and whatsoever is not of faith is sin. Even though eating meat offered to idols was not a sin in itself, since an idol is nothing, it would be a sin for a person who didn't understand that. So we can say that if a person is not convinced in his mind that using contraceptive devices is acceptable to God, then if he goes ahead and uses them, it would be a sin for him. Married couples need to realize that it is not an individual choice. The two spouses must be in total agreement on what they should do. Yeah, you're absolutely right about that. I I have a male friend who got a vasectomy, but his wife was not in agreement with him on that. Mm -hmm. I think he didn't even talk it over with her. He just made the decision, informed his wife, and then went to the hospital to have the operation. Later, his wife got pregnant by another man because she still wanted to have children. Mm -hmm. Sometimes there are health issues that have to be considered. 
having babies year after year with no time to rest and recuperate may put the mother's health at risk. It can cause a situation in which the mother's uterus may begin to sag, pulling other organs down as well, which can make serious problems for her for the rest of her life. And occasionally, a doctor may even advise a woman that if she gets pregnant again, it will likely cause her own death. We can see that sometimes using some form of contraception may be necessary in order to preserve the life and health of the mother. Now, I think we need to take a look at some of the options that are available to see which ones could be recommended. However, we aren't going to try to teach our viewers how to use the different methods. We're simply going to look at how they work in the body. Those of you who would like more information on any particular method can go to the nearest clinic or hospital to get instructions. One of the most commonly used methods of family planning is the pill that a woman mm -hmm. takes daily. Mm -hmm. It is used by many people all around the world because it is so easy and very effective. Janet, can you explain more about how the pills work? The pill is one type of hormone therapy. There are two other delivery methods besides taking a pill daily. There is an injection that can last for three months, and there is a patch that can be inserted just under the skin that lasts up to five years. You say that these pills and injections are hormones. Exactly how do those work? They contain the same hormones that are in a woman's bloodstream when she is pregnant. You know that when a woman is pregnant, she usually does not have normal periods. That's because the hormones in her body changed when she became pregnant and she is no longer ovulating or releasing eggs. When a woman takes birth control pills or gets an injection or has a patch inserted, then these pregnancy hormones are inserted into her bloodstream so that she no longer ovulates. So, as, as long as she's using one of these methods, she won't re be releasing eggs. Then when she has intercourse with her husband, there's no possibility of fertilizing an egg, thus no possibility of pregnancy. That's right. It is a method that is about 100% effective when used properly. However, not all women will be able to use this method. She will have to be examined by a doctor to make sure that she doesn't have a condition that would prevent its use. If a woman isn't able to use this hormone therapy, there's another method called a coil or a loop. This is a device that has been inserted by a doctor. Janet, tell us more about this method. It is technically called an IUD, an intrauterine device which simply means a device that is placed by a doctor inside the uterus of the woman. This device prevents a fertilized egg from implanting itself or attaching itself to the uterine wall, which it must do in order to get food from the mother's bloodstream. Instead, it is expelled out of the uterus, out of the body. Let me see if I can explain this. A woman releases an egg during her monthly cycle as usual. Then if it's fertilized, it is not allowed to attach itself to the uterine wall because this device has been inserted. Mm -hmm. And so it's cast out of the woman's body. Exactly. Though it is almost 90% effective, some people object to using it because fertilization or the union of the egg and the sperm may take place before the egg is expelled. I can see how that might be troubling. There, there's a third category of contraceptives that is widely used. That is the condom. The condom is not only widely used in Africa, but it is even being actively promoted by governments. It has the advantage of helping to prevent the spread of AIDS. However, it is not 100% effective, either as a method of contraception or in the prevention of AIDS. It may be about 80% effective when used properly and regularly. Then there is a permanent solution that some people use when they are absolutely certain that they don't want mm -hmm. to have any more children. That solution is surgery, a tubal ligation for the woman or a vasectomy for the man. I would like to point out here that though some people object to the use of medical means of contraception, 
claiming that God wants us to have as many children as we possibly can, these very same people turn to medicine, either herbal or chemical, when they get sick. Using the same line of reasoning, we could say that when a person gets sick, then perhaps God wants that person to die. Why don't they deny the use of medicine when one is sick if they claim that it is wrong to use medicine to space children and provide better quality of life for the whole family? Well, I think that's an excellent point, Janet. The same chemists who design birth control pills are the very ones who design modern medical treatments. If we can use one aid to better health, then why not the other as well? Mm -hmm. There is one last method that I'd like to mention that even the Catholic Church allows because it is natural. It is called the rhythm method, which we mentioned earlier. This technique involves keeping up with and counting the days of the wife's menstrual cycle. Two weeks after her period is the most likely time that a woman will get pregnant. So the couple have to agree to abstain from having sex for a period of eight days around this time. Wow, that sounds like a difficult thing for a couple to do. Yeah. When they are used to having sex regularly, then to have to refuse each other for eight days would be very difficult. However, if followed correctly, I know that it can be effective for some time. It's a method we used for five years after the birth of our fourth child until you got pregnant with our fifth child. Yes, it can be effective, but again, not all women will be able to use this method. It is based upon a woman who ovulates every 28 days, the most common duration of a menstrual cycle. If you're interested in this technique, you will need to visit a health clinic to learn exactly how to count the days and how to mark them properly on a calendar. Well, thank you, Janet, for that helpful information. As she has said, you'll need to get good medical advice before proceeding to use any of these methods of birth control. If you have any questions on this or any other topic, you can email us at aimfradio at gmail.com. We'll be more than happy to continue this conversation with you in private communication or to answer any question you may have on any topic relating to marriage and the family. Thank you so much for joining us.